Hi, my name is Pit Henrich. I will be presenting our paper Registered and Segmented Deformable Object Reconstruction from a Single Viewpoint Cloud. Our motivation is that robotic interaction with deformable objects is challenging. Segments you might want to interact with are often only defined in a prior rigid model. As an example, say you want to robotically disassemble this 3D printed lizard into predefined segments. Finding these segments uh, can be challenging if the lizard is wiggled about a little. Especially on this model, exploiting unique and clear visual landmarks is difficult due to the similarity of each body segment. A traditional approach to obtaining the segments would be to perform some kind of registration with the prior model. Registration methods for tasks such as this are usually very specialized and often complex to implement. As a result, a registration method developed for an articulated object such as the lizard or a robotic arm, for example, will likely not work for smoothly deforming objects such as a human. So, I would like to introduce to you our idea to obtain 3D model and segmentation information for many kinds of deformable objects. And the idea is that given a single observation, for example, a point cloud of a known deformable object, directly reconstruct a 3D model that is already registered and segmented. So the idea here is that instead of deforming a prior model to fit the observation, we reconstruct a 3D model that is registered and segmented based on the observation. The reconstruction representation is quite important. There is a lot of choice for different object representations for a system that outputs any kind of 3D model. Two common output formats for 3D models you may already be familiar with are surface meshes and voxel objects, for example. But sadly, it turns out that both of these representations come with pretty big challenges. When developing a system that outputs meshes, it is difficult to define regularizers that ensure that the output mesh has good topology and is without self-intersections or holes. Although voxel-based models do not have this problem, they come with a problematic trade-off between resolution and memory requirements. Currently, this makes them impractical if the object you wish to reconstruct is both large and has fine details. Lastly, you can use a function that implicitly defines clusters in 3D space, where the objects are defined as the boundaries between the clusters. You can interpret this as a continuous and functional representation of the voxel objects, so instead of querying a 3D array to find out what color or density voxel XYZ has, you evaluate a function at XYZ that outputs the color or density. And as this is a simple continuous function, which could remind you of a classifier perhaps, uh, we can train a neural network to approximate it. To represent a 3D object, we learn a function that maps spatial points to multi-class occupancy. This is an extension of occupancy networks presented by Meshita et al. in 2019. As stated previously, the 3D model is still implicitly defined by the function or the approximating neural network. To obtain the actual 3D object, you can query the function to build up a voxel model of the object. So if you query it on an equidistant grid, you can slowly um, reconstruct the volumetric voxel-based object or you can march along the decision boundary using a method similar to marching cubes. The advantages here are that without retraining the neural network or changing its architecture, we can change the inference resolution by simply querying more densely. Only encoding a single object in 3D space doesn't really help us to solve the problem of reconstructing objects in a deformed state based on sensor data. What we need to do is we need to condition the reconstruction on the sensor data. For this, we distill the sensor point cloud into a latent vector using a point cloud encoder. Um, the occupancy predictor, which is our function approximator, then receives this latent vector as an additional input. This additional input allows the occupancy predictor to change the output depending on the observation. To obtain that latent representation, we try different point cloud encoders and also a auto decoder architecture. So we tried PointNet++, Point Transformer, and we tried the auto-decoder architecture defined by uh, DeepSDF. Our approach is strictly supervised. We therefore need data pairs of point clouds 
um, so our sensor data and correctly labeled occupancy query points. For this, we use a virtual scene containing a deforming object and a camera. To obtain a single training example, the object is deformed randomly and the camera captures a depth image of it. At the same time, a sampling algorithm samples points inside the object's bounding box and labels them depending on what segment, if any, the points are inside. The way points are sampled, for example how close the samples are to the object surfaces, directly influences the reconstruction quality. In our paper, we present a novel method that prevents some of the biases present in approaches used by other current work. Finally, the sensor data and the query points are jointly normalized according to only the sensor data, because only that would be known in the, at inference time. And after the normalization, the sensor data lies within the minus one to one square or cube in 3D, but the um, occupancy query points may well lie outside of that square. Now, the training loop is actually quite simple. The point cloud encoder and the occupancy predictor are trained end to end. This is done by passing the encoded sensor data and the query points to the occupancy predictor, which then labels the query points. The label points are compared with the ground truth obtained from the sampler in the data generation process to compute the loss and update the whole system. And as the system learns to better classify each point, the decision boundaries between the classes slowly build up our 3D object. To evaluate our system, we use 10 different objects with varying moving parts and segments. For each of these objects, we generate a dataset and train the point cloud encoder and the occupancy predictor end to end. Each of the trained instances is then evaluated on a test dataset of unseen sensor data examples. In this work, we used a Vox model obtained by equidistantly querying the neural network to compare with the ground truth model to compute IOU and MIOU, so the intersection over union and mean intersection over union. Visually, you can see how close the reconstructions are to the references. Additionally, reconstructions from sensor data sequences is also smooth with little or no geometry flickering. And finally, the system trained on virtual data can also be used for reconstructing from real world sensor data. On the bottom right, you can see a lizard reconstruction that is based on real world data. And as you can see, a lot of the fundamental structural information is present in the reconstruction. Still, there is a drop in accuracy when compared to a reconstruction using virtual data. In summary, we present a method to reconstruct 3D models in deformed states from a single point cloud. This is a single system that can provide segmented 3D models for many types of deformations. It can be used with real-world data and the reconstruction can be formed at any resolution needed without retraining the model or changing the architecture. Going forward, we plan to use this method for real-world robotic interaction with deformable objects. Thank you for your attention.